an iron? All right guys, welcome back. I'm really excited for this week's video, but it is already shaping up to be on the longer side. So I will keep this intro short and sweet. As many of you guys know already, I am a big fan of using recycled and secondhand materials to create many of my projects, but I'm not sure anybody understands to what extent I will take this practice. So I've decided to bring you all with me on a week of dumpster diving adventures so you can experience the wealth of material that is just sitting out there waiting to be mined and perhaps be inspired to do your own investigations into what is out there in your own neighborhood just waiting to be found. Also, please forgive the background noises at some points. Filming outside is always challenging, and even more so here in windy Copenhagen, so while I've done my best to improve the sound in post, it is still not perfect. Let's get started. Alright guys, so I'm here on the very first location of our dumpster diving adventures, and I am here at the parking lot of a... Ooh, high-rise building. There are actually several all around me here. And this is a location that is actually on one of my two main routes into the city every day. And I have been seeing these red sofas out in their parking lot back here, which is where people also have their large dumpsters and recycling things. And I passed it by for the first couple of days because I thought, ah, it's a bit too adventurous for me, but they've been sitting out there for three days now just calling my name every time I go by and so I've decided it's finally time I'm gonna go investigate and see how much fabric I can salvage from the situation. I have not taken a look at them yet. I'm hoping that they're in okay shape. I don't know if you can tell but it is actually raining out. This is Copenhagen. It's been raining pretty much every day since they've been out there so they are gonna be pretty waterlogged but the fabric could still be in very good shape. So so wish me luck, perhaps it will all be in good condition and I'll walk away with a marvelous find and perhaps it'll be in just a state of disrepair and I'll have to abandon it completely. So let's go check it out and see if I can salvage myself some gorgeous red fabric. dumpsters can be hygienically and morally questionable, to say the least, so I have developed a set of personal rules. This is more what you call guidelines than actual rules. 1. I don't take anything that is in a clear plastic bag or otherwise marked for donation to Goodwill or Salvation Army. They need it more than I do. 2. I usually try not to take something that is in good shape and break it down for parts if I think somebody else could find it and use it as a whole. Three, due to COVID, and it's probably a good policy in general, everything I find sits outside in the open air garage for at least a couple days to air out before being brought back inside. I try to wear gloves when possible, but I also sanitize my hands immediately after any dumpster digging and I wash them thoroughly when I get home. Four. Cleaning practices vary from object to object, but in general, all fabric gets washed in as hot of water as my machine will produce. Except this Hugo Boss jacket that is dry clean only, but let's be honest, I don't find those very often. So we have arrived at this next place, which is a sort of small community recycling center that's basically just for this neighborhood to come and drop off their unwanted furniture, clothing, anything that can be reused or given a second life. And they also have large dumpsters for things such as big pieces of metal, plastic, wood, things that are too big to go in the normal recycle bins. They have special dumpsters here for that as well. So let's go check it out and see if there's anything good. And this time of the year, it also doubles as a Christmas tree cemetery.
See about that shit. All right, so here we are at one of my habitual dumpsters. This is one that I pass on the way to the recycling center, so maybe every couple weeks or so and sometimes there's stuff next to it sometimes there's not let's go check it out so this is a dumpster that's meant to be for normal trash but often people leave stuff back behind it if it's not actual trash but still stuff that's usable doesn't look like there's a whole lot if i was in the market for a stroller that would be perfect but you know i don't have a kid to check the other side lots of cardboard today looks like a day where it's mostly actual trash oh some clothes maybe there'll be something in there that's useful well maybe if I was like 12 years old and in the market for a pink fur trimmed onesie I would be in luck but don't think it's quite my style so all in all that one was not so successful today but that is part of the deal right sometimes you find treasures and sometimes you just find nothing so on to the next one all right we're here at container number two which is just about one block away from the last container and this one is this is a good dumpster diving find. So here we go. Let's take a look at what we've got going on here. I'm pretty confident that I'm gonna be able to find something interesting in all of this. Ooh, I think we've got some white fabric and some lace. I don't know, maybe that's good. An acupuncture mat. Not that I need one because I already have one, but you know. A cute little wicker basket here, but I'm actually more interested in what the heck are these? We've got some funky ass jaw bones. I'm definitely taking those. What do you think about that, huh? Oh, oh. <laughs> Ooh, looks like a bunch of maybe some more fabric. Oh yeah. We'll be keeping that. Can always use some more fabric. Pine tone? To be fair, it's a very pretty pine tone. There's some nice wicker containers here. Ooh, and some candles. Those look like they're still in good shape. Oh, an advent calendar. I mean, I guess we could count down from February 1st. Yeah, why not? Some more cute little containers as well as this cute little soap dispenser, perfume dispenser. I'm not sure, but I'm pretty sure we can make something out of this. These guys don't go bad. Four gigs. That's pretty small these days, but still four gigs is nothing to laugh at. Those are coming with some little hooks. Got some funky old jars here. They're kind of a cool shape, so I might take one or two just for fun. So I've definitely found some pillows here and I was gonna take them just for the fabric, but then I realized that they're actual down pillows. So I'm gonna take them because I think I could use the feathers for some bust enhancers. What do we think about that? Oh, 
thank you. So that went way better than I expected. Yahoo! So that went incredibly well. Now I need to figure out how to jam all of this stuff into my bike and uh, get all of this home. So that should be fun. So this is me still on the way home with my bike full of stuff from that last dumpster and uh, guess what I came across uh, on the way home <laughs> from that last dumpster. This is insane. That's kind of neat. I'm uh, pretty sure I have a cabinet of curiosities for things just like this. Canela, I'm so sorry. So I thought this would be a good time to give you a little background information on the trash and recycling system that we have here in Denmark. So Denmark introduced the world's first law ever on recycling in 1978, which stated that at least 50% of all paper and beverage packaging should be recycled. And this basically set the stage for Denmark to become one of the world leaders in recycling. In 2019, for example, 92% of our bottles and cans were returned for recycling. Specific methods of collection differ from region to region, but here in Copenhagen, we have bins for paper, plastic, glass, metal waste, as well as general garbage, compost, electronics, and chemical waste. The recycling system is so complicated that people moving to Denmark are often confused. I mean, just look, we have an entire calendar of various other special collection days like large organic waste, goodwill donations, and large garbage items that don't fit in the normal bin. It still weirds me out when I go home to visit my parents and they don't have compost. You mean you just throw your food waste in the garbage? Savages. And I won't even touch on actual recycling centers as that's a topic for a whole nother video. But as a fun fact nugget, there are a couple recycling centers here that, with more than 400,000 annual visitors, rival some of Denmark's largest tourist attractions. And anything that I don't manage to pull out of the dumpster goes straight to Copenhill, the combination ski slope and power plant that burns the trash that can't be recycled, generating enough heat and electricity for 150,000 homes in the area, while simultaneously giving visitors a chance to ski down its slopes, enjoy the view from its rooftop bar, or go bouldering on the world's tallest artificial climbing wall. All of this infrastructure makes it pretty easy for Danes to recycle basically anything. But that doesn't mean that everybody takes advantage of the system. Even if Denmark as a country leads the world in recycling, there are still plenty of individuals who just can't be bothered. Maybe a relative just died and the family doesn't have the mental energy to sort through all of their personal possessions. Or maybe somebody just moved from another country and hasn't figured out the recycling system yet. Whatever the case may be, there are plenty of items that slip through the cracks of the Danish recycling system and end up in the dumpsters. And that's where I come in. Ooh! Cute. I'll take it. All right, well, I wasn't even planning on going dumpster diving today. I was just out for a walk with the dog, but came across this little baby and couldn't turn it down. So we are gonna throw her in the bucket bike and bring her home, cause I can't control myself. Yeah. A perfect fit. Cute! Alright guys, today was supposed to be the last day of my week of dumpster diving, but we've had a small change in plans because look what is happening behind me. We have snow! 
This is Copenhagen. This never happens. Apparently once upon a time it used to snow in the winters here, but it's been two winters that we've been here and there has been no snow. So I am taking a snow day because I have a dog that is desperately in need of playing outside in the snow. So we'll be back tomorrow with a resumed slightly extended week of dumpster diving. In the meantime, please enjoy this interlude of Overly Happy Corgi. Okay, so I know that I said that I was gonna take today off and I promise that was absolutely my intention, but once again, life kind of happened and it actually turns out that tomorrow morning is the big item pickup in our neighborhood. So once every two weeks, um, a special service comes around and picks up all the things that are really oddly shaped that don't fit into any of the other categories of garbage removal. And uh, that day happens to be tomorrow. And so while I was out walking canal, I came upon some amazing goodies. So guys, check this out. All right, so I don't know that this is gonna show up very well, but there is the most interesting piece of furniture right here, and it has some super cool legs on it. So we're gonna see if we can extract those legs, and then also both here and over there, there are some interesting things that I'm gonna rummage through. So let's see if I find anything good, and I will report back to you once I am back at home. And just in case anybody is worried about the prospect of me cannibalizing this piece of furniture just for the legs, I would like to point out that it is probably completely wrecked. I don't think anyone else is going to try and take this. Sorry, that tolling that you hear is actually this kind of cool grandfather clock here, which apparently is still in working order. Would be kind of cool to save it. I don't know, we'll see. But um, definitely with all this snow, this furniture is in no condition to be saved by anyone unless they're absolutely as crazy as I am. So I do not feel bad at all by trying to take off those beautiful legs and salvage at least part of this beautiful piece of furniture. All right, so I am back and we are continuing this in my garage because, well, one, it started raining and two, there were a couple older women who were giving me some hardcore stink eye. So once I got my stuff, I skedaddled out of there, but I'm back here in my garage to give you a quick lowdown on what it was that I found. So first off, as you guys saw, I found these white curtains, which are in very good shape. They aren't stained at all, and they were actually clearly freshly laundered because they smell wonderful. Don't worry, I will still wash them again just for posterity, but they are in very good shape, so that's great news. And then I also found this very cute wooden box. It has a nice little uh, decal on the other end there, and I am a sucker for cute boxes. Speaking of cute boxes, I have this little guy, little jewelry holder, 
which is really cute. I'll probably use that to hold some of my miscellaneous sewing bits and bobs. And then this mortar and pestle, which is super cute. And I have um, some kind of some Halloween-y related plans for this later on in the year. So we're saving that. Then there were about 20 packages of plastic straws. I know that straws aren't great for the environment, but these were literally already in the dumpster to be thrown away. So I figured I might as well at least use some of them before they get thrown away. They could be useful for some crafts or, you know, drinking. And then the two last things are the ones that I am absolutely the most excited about. The first one you can see clearly here, and that is this gorgeous iron. It is in really good shape. When I found it, it was actually still in its original box. And uh, looking at it, I can see it's been lightly used because it does have some mineral residue from somebody using non-distilled water, but it's very light. It's otherwise in immaculate shape. So I am super excited about this find. This will definitely be an upgrade to the iron that I currently have. And then lastly is this sewing kit, which the plastic box is in very rough shape, so that will probably be getting discarded. I haven't had time to go through it all. I kind of basically just opened up, saw what it was, and snatched it. Um, but I do right off the bat see some Taylor's chalk, cotton thread, there are a couple thimbles here, as well as a seam ripper, some needles for my sewing machine, a, a pattern marker transfer wheel thing. All in all, I'm gonna go through this later after it's kind of sat out here and uh, disinfected itself, but it looks like there's gonna be some really interesting things in here. I call this a very successful dumpster diving day. So what does an entire week of dumpster diving in Copenhagen look like? It looks like this. These are the results of my week of dumpster diving, all gathered here and on display for you. And let me say, I was actually legitimately concerned that they would not all fit on this table. And actually, if you consider the larger pieces of furniture that I picked up over the course of this week that aren't in the frame, then they actually don't all fit on this table. So there we have it, my very first haul video. If you had told me a year ago that I'd be sitting on YouTube doing a haul video, I'd have laughed in your face. But then again, if you had told me that I was climbing in and out of dumpsters and filming my exploits, I'd probably shrug and say, yeah, sounds about right. Because, and you can ask my closest friends about this, I have been doing that for a very long time. So this video actually represents a fairly high frequency of dumpster diving for me. Usually, unless I'm really specifically on the hunt for something, I only go dumpster diving when the mood strikes me, so maybe once every week or so. I also don't go out of my way to find any of these dumpsters. All of the locations that you saw today are either directly on the way to work or on the path that I go every day to walk my dog. Maybe one day I'll go on a mission to see if I can scout out more good locations, but as we've already seen in this video, even the few locations that I already know about and frequent provide me with almost more stuff than I know what to do with. Now this is definitely more work than going to the fabric store or the hobby shop, but it's also far better for the environment and for my wallet. Plus, I actually really enjoy the hunt. I have always liked rummaging around in thrift stores because I really like searching for that hidden gem and not knowing exactly what you're gonna walk out finding. I have to be in the right mood, but when I am, I really enjoy both thrifting and dumpster diving. Of course, for some projects, if I'm in a hurry or if I'm looking for something super specific, I will go out and buy it sometimes. I'm not opposed to purchasing something I really need, especially if it's really specific and I know that I will use it. But that approach just isn't my first line of thinking or my go-to plan of action. Well, I hope you enjoyed coming along with me on that most ridiculous of adventures, digging into other people's dumpsters and taking their trash and proving that actually it can make some pretty great treasures. If you too have done some dumpster diving in your days, what are some of the best things that you have found? And if you haven't, does this video inspire you perhaps one day once things are a bit safer to go out and explore some dumpsters in your own neighborhood? Okay, time for some more quantifiable results. The candles I collected added up to roughly 52 hours of burn time. The fabric I salvaged totaled over 30 yards of fabric, including over 15 yards from the IKEA couch alone. I picked up at least $100 in clothing, and that's me estimating their thrifted price. Don't even ask me what everything would have cost new. 
I estimate a minimum of $120 worth of hardware, including things like the iron, the carpenter square, the flash drives, the Christmas lights, etc. And in yarn alone, I have 645 meters, or 705 yards, all of which, upon closer inspection, was 100% wool. That's it for this week, guys. I hope you had as much fun as I did, and if so, please consider subscribing and giving the video a thumbs up. I've got some great historical and vintage sewing in the works, featuring some of the articles we collected here today. Until next time, stay safe, stay healthy, and get crafting!